So number talks can be done by teachers in the whole class, um, as we're going to see. Or parents can also do mini number talks with their children just by asking them the number problems and then challenging them to find a, a different solution, to work with the problem with a different method. Having kids solve problems in different ways teaches them a very, very important building block in number sense and mathematics. They, it is teaching them the, an ability and willingness to break numbers apart or decompose them and regroup them. This turns out to be a very important foundational base from which all other mathematics builds, as Sebastian talked about. They also teach students something very important, which is that math is a creative and flexible subject. And this is so important. Um, an English mathematician, Walter Sawyer, who wrote the book A Mathematician's Delight, once wrote uh, this. He said, the depressing thing about arithmetic badly taught is that it destroys a child's intellect and to some extent his integrity. Before they're taught arithmetic, children will not give their assent to utter nonsense. Afterwards, they will. And we certainly have a lot of evidence of that. We need children to understand numbers, not to blindly remember methods that they use, um, but to really understand why they work and how um, the methods may be used. And number talks work really well at different levels. I think they're great to use in mixed groups of students. I've given that problem eight times 15, that exact same problem, to elementary students, to Stanford undergrads, to CEOs of companies, and people have engaged with it with equal interest and excitement and really loved seeing the different methods and thinking about them. Luke Bartlett is the executive director of Wolfram Alpha, a site you probably know and love if you're a maths teacher. And he read my book and wrote to me saying, you have no idea how many times I now ask people to calculate 18 times 5. So it turns out people are really interested in seeing all the different ways in which people are able to think about these number problems. Um, and as I said, I've used them in different settings and found people to be super engaged. And really, you just see their eyes light up when a problem is solved in lots of different ways as, as people come to understand the creativity in numbers and in maths. I taught algebra to a group of uh, pretty disaffected uh, seventh and eighth graders in the US um, a short while ago, and I'm going to talk about it more in the algebra session. But we started every lesson with a number talk, and they absolutely blew students' minds. They had never before seen problems, particularly bare number problems, solved in all of these different ways, and it really changed their view of maths and what's possible. And when we interviewed students at the end of the program, it was really the number talks that had amazed them the most. And it led to the students saying things like this. One of the students we interviewed said, it's like the way, the way our schools did it is like very black and white. And the way people do it here, it's like very colorful, very bright. You have very different varieties you're looking at. You can look at it one way, turn your head, and all of a sudden you see a whole different picture. So it really helped give them a much more authentic view of mathematics. And they're great to use in heterogeneous groups, which of course all groups of students are heterogeneous, because what we'll find is some people are helped just by seeing the method and how to solve the problem, whereas students who are at a higher level are really uh, benefit from seeing the different solution paths. Sometimes students are, who are working at a high level only have one way of thinking about maths. Um, Number ticks are also the only very quick pedagogical practice that I know of that teaches number fluency and automaticity at the same time as a conceptual understanding of number. And you may think that they're not needed with more advanced classes, such as high school classes, um, students taking geometry and algebra, but at Stanford, what we've found is that the high school students who are given number talks are the worst at the same exact problems given to younger children. They are the least able to use number sense, um, and they really struggle with even the most basic number problems. Kathy Humphreys conducted a study in the past year with geometry classes in high school, regular, on-track students, uh, not behind in any way. But when the students were given number problems, they really struggled. They, could, they tried to use procedures that they'd learned, um, they were saying things like, oh, I have to carry the one or cross out the three, um, writing with their fingers in the air. But they were really unable to use numbers since they were unable at first to use numbers flexibly. 
um, to break them apart and recombine them to make them easier.